Welcome back to Copperline Rattler Ranch, everyone. I am Julia. In this week's video, we're going to be putting our uh, gas lines in for our LP gas service. As you know, we're not experts at this. We're not doing this as uh, an educational, instructional video at all. Just watch uh, what we're doing. Um, take from it what you can. Understand that we're making every effort to do everything to code. Uh, and again, we're not calling this an instructional or educational uh, or even an informational type video. Watch and see what we do. Um, we didn't record everything because it took both of us to do a lot of the work on it. Um, so uh, yeah, here we go. Here's some of the supplies that we're going to be needing for the LP gas. Um, we've got the tubing, of course, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get some more of that because our trench ended up being a little bit longer than what this is. This is 100 feet. I shouldn't say it. We're just afraid that it's going to be close. Three risers, one for the tank, one for the hot water, and one to go to the kitchen, and then all sorts of connections. We've got straight couplers, a couple of these T connections, a couple right angle connections. The only thing we didn't get were caps. So Don's going to pick up some caps as he returns that trencher. Um, we need the caps, of course, to keep everything debris free while we're waiting for the tank hookup. And then also we have to do a pressure test. So we did get a test uh, meter. Where is it? Oh, it's somewhere over here. Anyway, oh, here it is. So we did get a, a meter to test the pressure and we'll have to review again how much pressure for how long, but um, everything says that you actually test it at a higher pressure than what it's ever gonna have. One thing also to code with this is you need tracer wire and this is gonna go down along the edge of the tubing or in that same trench. Um, and that's so that if anybody in the future needs to ensure that they find the location of the gas lines, which is this, um, they can find it safely and, and not have to worry about where they're digging. This will actually come out along with the uh, risers, not hooked up to anything. So they'll hook up a little whatever device in order to find it. And then they can detect where the line is underground. One other thing that is uh, necessary to code is to have this tape. So this tape, we'll put the, the, we'll put the assembled line down. We'll do our test that will have the tracer wire near it. Um, once we're sure that we have no leaks, we'll bury the line about six inches and then the, the tape goes down. That way, if anybody does dig in the area, they'll hit the tape first and be like, oh my gosh, can't dig any further. So yellow is the color for gas. So there's yellow stripes there. There's yellow tracer here. There's yellow on these connections, yellow for the, for the line. So that's where we're at with that. Like I said, Don has to get a couple of caps uh, to go onto these so that we're ready to do the test and that we're ready uh, when they come to do the tank hookup. And once that hookup is done, then we can hook up to the hot water heater for the uh, house. And then when we get the kitchen built, we'll add the uh, attachment for the riser to the gas range that's in the kitchen or that will be in the kitchen. And like I said earlier, it's kind of like PEX. This is, seems to be about the same type of material that PEX would be. And even though these aren't quite like a shark bite, um, they're still fairly easy to assemble. You, you put it on the ends of the, of the pipe and you just have to make sure that these are screwed down very tightly in order to make a nice seal. Along with everything, I believe, yeah, in here, in this bag, these go in the ends of the pipe before you put the end of the pipe in here. And that just helps to secure a nice tight seal when you're uh, attaching these and screwing these on tight.
Okay, so we actually rented a ditch witch this time um, because our friend Tom has loaned his ditch witch to another neighbor. And we do appreciate him having that available to us and being so willing to, to loan it to us when we've asked if we could borrow it. But anyway, we're going with this one that we rented. Um, we are going the max depth that it can go, which is 24 inches. The uh, code states that we need to be 18 minimum to 24. So we are 24 everywhere. We ran into a little bit of a snag over here. We're gonna have to attack it. But as you can see down there, there's our electrical, our direct berry electrical. That is also 24 down. So up on that end, we're gonna have to uh, bring the ditch switch back over. Don was being extremely careful because he didn't want to go so deep that he hit that wire. So we were being cautious. And while he was working on the uh, that other side where the ditch switch is now, I came over here with a shovel and uh, the vacuum um, to try and find the wire. So we have found it. He did measure 24 inches down. Um, like I said, we got to clean this up here. You can see that ditch isn't quite 24, but when we get done, it will be. And we will do some tape measuring just to ensure that, uh, you know, we'll do some spot checking to make sure we got 24 inches. So where I'm at now is where we will put the indoor kitchen and hook up to the uh, gas range from this location here. And again, he's been measuring the whole time, 24 inches down, and we just have a little bit more to go till we meet up the two lines. Um, he's going to make a little pass for the riser that will go directly to the um, propane tank, the LP tank. Um, so we're almost done with this. So Don's put a piece of tape marking the bottom edge is at 18 inches. So if I measure from the bottom up, we measure to the bottom of this tape. And if I measure with it this way, we go to the top of the tape. So 18 inches. It's a regular three foot yardstick. So half of three feet is 18 inches. So I'm going to go... On this side, you see the 17 and then the one for the 18 right there at the bottom. So I'm going to measure some spots with that. And you can see, hopefully, it's hard to see, we're well above the 18. We're at about 22 and a half. Here, here's some rocks down in here. So those are an area of concern. And we are well above our 18. <clears throat> Another little spot check, well above the 18, and so on down that way. Now, where Dawn is digging right now was an area where there are a lot of heavy rocks. I don't know if you can see that little white flag that marks the electrical crossing. He was being very cautious with the trencher in that area because we weren't sure exactly where that uh, electrical crossing was going to be. So now that we found it, we found it when we were using the trencher, he was working the trencher and I was digging right there. And uh, so now he's got to work on bringing that down. That's the last place and there's probably one more place right in this area that we'll need to bring down. So there you have it. We're almost there. Okay, I'm going to measure a few other places so we at least have some documentation. We're good there. Go a little bit more. And definitely good there. And definitely good there. Mmm, very good, very good. Just a couple more spots. Trench will be ready. So the trencher does kick a lot of the loose stuff back down into the trench. So what we do to maximize our depth, and we've done this for a while with some of the trenches and when we've dug the holes for the um, 
solar panels. Look at all that junk under there. For the posts, for the solar panels. Uh, we use the vacuum to get all the way down to the bottom. The posts, I must say, were really a challenge because we had to get lots of extensions for that. But it'll take a lot of that loose material. I don't know if you can see those rocks down there. I'll have to get you close and see if you can. Um, but yeah, it gets that loose and ensures that we can have the maximum amount of depth that we're going to need. So we've got our trench almost ready to go. The tank will go off this little T area here. And to the left will go around to the hot water heater for the house. To the right will go to the kitchen for the gas range. So this is one of the three risers we have. He's got a cap on it so that we can do the pressure. So, so two risers have the cap. One will have the test gauge. And on the side of the test gauge is a place where you can, a uh, valve where you can fill uh, the tubing with air. This one is the valve, the test gauge. So once he fills it up in that little uh, uh, access port there, we'll watch the gauge, get it up to 15 pounds, which is the highest point, you can see that. It has to hold that for 30 minutes. All right, all of our gas tubing is in place. All our connections within the tubing itself, not connected to any thing at the house. We're not connected to the furnace. And of course we haven't got the kitchen built yet. So, um, but one of the things that the supplier wanted us to make sure that we did and everybody has to do this, is uh, pressure test the line, make sure there's no leaks. So Don is getting ready to do that right now, so let's go take a look. Is it moving? Not yet, but I hear it for some reason. It's not moving at all. I hear, I hear air right here at the T. So we have to let this sit. We finally got it to hold pressure at 15 and we're going to start our countdown for 30 minutes. So very exciting. We did pass our 15, I'm sorry, yes, our 30 minute test at 15 pounds of pressure uh, for our LP gas line. So. We we'll put a call into our supplier and we're waiting to hear back as to how soon he can get out here with the tank and get us hooked up. What we still have to do is place the tracer wire. We'll show you that and then also place the tape. So you bury it about six inches and then place the tape, the gas line tape. As always, it takes longer than what we ever, ever think that it's going to take. So um, we started our leak tests and immediately heard one connection that, that was leaking, it was hissing. So we addressed that, started a leak test again, um, and that, that leak test didn't even fill the uh, gauge. So we decided we would start at one end of the line, examine all of our connections, make sure that they were all properly set um, with no issues. Uh, we did find a couple of issues where we had to trim some of the pipe the pipe in this instance needs to be as squarely cut as possible um, or it just won't give you a tight seal. So we found a couple that had that issue, a couple more that we had intentionally left loose because we felt like we needed to have a little wiggle room. Um, and once we tightened everything up, made sure everything was set, we passed the test. So 15 pounds of pressure for 30 minutes is pretty standard. And as I started looking again today online, I was checking, um, you know, posed the question, how do I pressure test an LP gas line? Um, there were some places that said it needs to hold pressure for 15 minutes and others that said it needed to hold pressure for 30. So we went on the side of caution, if you will, and went for 30. And we actually went over 30 because we decided we'd set it set the set a, a timer we went to lunch and then the timer went off and we waited probably another 15 20 minutes before don came out and checked and he said it was all good 
at that point, um, when we started that test, I had actually stopped by before we went in for lunch and checked it at about the 10 minute mark and it was holding pressure. So I felt very confident it would make it through the 30 minutes. So with all that, we've got the call out to our supplier. He's gonna hopefully be here tomorrow morning. We can take a hot shower hopefully by tomorrow night. That would be so wonderful in our new shower. Our RV provides a nice hot shower, but the space is just, if you've ever been in an RV shower, they're very tiny, so yeah, we're very excited. This is another great milestone for us. Almost done getting the LP tank set up. So the whole purpose of putting the propane in, of course, is so that we could have hot water in the shower, hot water in the bathroom sink, and uh, we also have the line placed so that we can have hot water and the gas range working when we get the kitchen built. Success, we have hot water in the bathroom. So that's really great. So we're very, very happy about that. So with that, we're gonna end this video for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Any questions or comments in that comment section below the video, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, a little surprise, hold on. So here's that surprise. This lovely little lady showed up at our doorstep uh, about five days ago. No collar. That's the collar that we just got for her. Um, just skin and bones. She's plumping up nicely. Very sweet. Very eager to learn. She is still a puppy. You can see that her feet are still a little bit big. Um, we still have to get her to the vet for a wellness check and get all of her shots. Um, but she's fitting in fairly well. The boys aren't super crazy to have another dog here, but they're not hurting her. They are tolerant of her, so I'm, I'm happy with that. And like I said, she's just a sweetheart. Just a sweetheart. So we named her Sweetie, S-W-E-E-T-I-E, -E, Miss Sweetie. So she is the newest member of our homestead, and she's ready for her nap today.